Well, the Predators make their first major move of free agency. It's not a Ford like they probably should have gone. It's a goaltender. Something we didn't even think was going to be an area they target this offseason. We'll talk about the Kevin Lankinen signing. Plus, Ryan McDonough talks about coming to the Nashville Predators. We'll have a hit from his uh, press conference. And a development camp wrap-up. Today's the last day. Uh, we got the prospects game coming up. And we'll hear from some of the Preds' rising stars about their week and their future in Smashville. Coming up today in the Locked On Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day each and every day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer at OnTheForeCheck.com. Well, didn't have this one on our board, Ann. Uh, no. The Predators finally make a signing for the NHL roster after like five or six for the AHL roster. Um, not a forward. It's Kevin Lankinen, the goalie from the Chicago Blackhawks, uh, a goalie for the Chicago Blackhawks who really wasn't good last year, uh, signing one year contract, 1.5 million. Um, this throws a lot of question marks out there. Uh, which surprisingly, the least of which is why is Kevin Lakin in your backup <laughs> goalie? Um, <laughs> your your take on this, Anne? Yeah, this one absolutely threw me, and I agree with you. It was way down the thought process when I got to really um, because now you're looking at a Predators roster where you've got excess goaltending. You've got UC Saros, you've got Ingram, Connor Ingram, Devin Cooley just signed. Of course, you've got Iroslav Askarov, and now you sign Lankanen. And so my mind automatically starts going, did you lose count or is something else going on? And it makes me feel like there is something else going on. And I don't like the direction that the something else in my mind was headed. I don't, I don't like, I don't like it at all. Is, is David Poyle just like Ash Ketchum from Pokemon where he just sees like a goaltender to add and he's just like, <laughs> I choose you and just <laughs> all at him and like just absorbs, you know, just yeah. like on the back banner. You, you, hmm. As you mentioned, I think there's there's something more to this, mm-hmm. and I don't think Preds fans are going to like the outcome unless it's one specific outcome. Because here's the thing. Um, it appeared that Ingram had done enough to be the Preds' mm-hmm. backup last year. Um, in fact, you know, the, from what Poyle and Hines kind of said in their season ended, they kind of seemed like the direction they were going was kind of have Connor Ingram – be your backup to UC Saros. Right. That was something that, hey, maybe we thought was going to happen last year before the president mm-hmm. like David Riddick. But, hey, you know, we, we knew the story about Ingram's season the year before, which was the COVID shortened year and, and the, when he took some time off. We get it. Maybe he, you know, they wanted to give him another full year. Got that. But he went to Milwaukee, had an incredible year, came up multiple times for the Predators. Yes. Came in and played admirably, including in the postseason when UC Saros went down, um, almost stole game two. And then who the hell knows what happens the rest of that series? I mean, it still ends with we don't talk about that. It still ends with Colorado winning, but you know, hey, you split the first two games on the road. Who knows what kind of pep in your step Mm -hmm. you have the rest of the series? So, you know, it, it doesn't make sense in that regard. Now, presumably, Ingram goes back to Milwaukee. But, you know, if, if that's the case, if that was your plan, if you don't see Ingram as an NHL backup, then what was the point of re-signing Devin Cooley? Like, what was that point right. when you have Yaroslav Askarov 
coming up in the system. Uh, also, let's not forget that the Preds right now don't have an ECHL yes. affiliate. So you're also going to have to find some place for Thomas Vamachka to play. And now all of a sudden, like, it, it's it's weird asset management. Like, it's weird asset management. Yeah. Especially because there's still glaring needs elsewhere, including at the Ford spot, where you have presumably now $1.5 million less to go out and sign not one, but two upgrades at Ford's. Yes, there's so much about this that raises so many questions. And I agree with what you're saying about Ingram because I felt like all indications at the end of the season were very clear that Connor Ingram was going to be the backup to Saros. And yes, he has not had a ton of NHL experience, but I feel like what the Predators saw from him last season really indicated he was going to be their guy. And when you look at the workload that Saros had last season, They've been clear they're not probably going to give him as many games as they gave him last year. But this is somebody who it's not like you're going to require the backup goalie to be splitting games 50-50. I mean, this is really an ideal situation for Connor Ingram coming in yeah. if Saros is healthy. I mean, this is the, the ideal situation for breaking in a goalie and getting him more NHL experience for Connor Ingram. And agree with you. In the playoffs, I feel like, you know, yeah, okay, we don't have to talk about the outcome, but I feel like Connor Ingram stepped up and really earned this backup goalie spot. There is no ECHL place. We have too many goalies, which leads me to believe they have a plan, which leads me to almost hope that they have a plan. Yeah. And I I don't like that indicates to me because I don't see the Predators trading UC Saros. That's just not going to happen. Uh, I don't, you know, they're not going to trade Askarov. That is not going to happen. Um, You just signed Devin Cooley. You bring in Lankinen. What scares me is that if Connor Ingram has now become a trade piece and that's the only way this makes sense to me is that Connor Ingram has now gotten enough value that he could be part of a package for something. But if if that's the thing, then that's fine. You know, if he's a trade, we've seen teams desperate for goaltending this sure. off season that may take a flyer in Connor Ingram. So if he's a trade piece for, you know, a second line forward, you know, if he's part of that package, Sure. Like that's Mm -hmm. like, that's, that's fine. But, you know, it seems like David Poyle needs kind of an idea of what that would take beforehand. Now, if he's talking to like Vancouver, who, um, you know, kind of has questions Mm -hmm. after Thatcher Demko, then that's, you know, then that's fine because, Hey, maybe JT Miller wants to come over here and, Oh, well, we're only going to do that. If, you know, Connor Ingram is part of the deal. Cause we need a backup. Fine. Sure. Like if those are the discussions, right. that's great, but we haven't heard any inkling that that's the case. You know, it just seems mm-hmm. like you're doing this to do that. And let's go back to the cap for a second, because with uh, Lincoln and now, you have only $8 million worth of cap space. And that may seem like a lot, but you got to remember Trennan's not signed yet. That's going to be a chunk of that. And you have two players you need to sign. Um, And I, yes, I do say need to sign because you need upgrades at forward and you only have 8 million or like, you're going to have around only 6 million to do that. Right. Second line fours have been going for four to five million. Uh, and then all of a sudden you are right up against that cap with no wiggle room. I mean, David Poyle said he wants to spend up to the cap, but you know, he's you still have to think about asset management. And if you know the the Preds cap situation is fine, but it's not exactly mm-hmm. like it's rosy either. I mean, we talked about this yesterday. They have a lot of players locked up. For at least three, four more years, there's not a lot of big money coming off the books next year besides Dante Fabro, and that's only about two point three million. And you may want to resign him. And you have Tanner Janot, who's going to be a restricted free agent. You have Alex right. Carrier, who's going to be a restricted free agent. So you know, it's not like the Predators have a rosy cap situation. And so, 
trading a or getting rid of a serviceable backup who's only making nine hundred thousand and getting in a backup who, based on the numbers last year, was worse. I mean, with a bigger sample size, yeah. but was worse than Connor right. Abraham for basically double the salary. You have to ask David Poyle, like, is this the best move? Yes. I think there are a number of people in Nashville asking that. And again, if this is part of a bigger move, okay. Now, I will say this. I would, again, my husband told me yesterday I would be a lousy GM because I would hate to see Connor Ingram go. He has not made sports, competitive athletics t-shirts to sell. And I love him. But if this is part of a bigger package to fill a bigger need for the Nashville Predators, that is one thing. But like you said, we have not even heard a whisper of something like that brewing. And so it does make one nervous. Hopefully this is a strategic move, you know, to combine some assets with some value to get something back. But otherwise, just literally, I was like, did I read that wrong? A goalie? Like, yeah. I, I feel like we're good. Like, we're okay. We've got several. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, this one baffled me. Yeah. Uh, well, more free agency talk coming up in a second. And uh, Ryan McDonough comes to Nashville. So we'll hear from him coming up. Uh, first, I want to make a take a second and talk about today's sponsor, which is betonline.net. That's your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info. They have all of the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news. Everything from MLB, got the home run derby coming up, which I'm excited about golf, boxing, UFC, pretty much any sport you could ask for, they've got the skinny on it. Bet online is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information. Live betting, esports, scores, props, odds, lines, anything like that. They also have a great selection of podcasts and news. It's the easiest way to check on all of your favorite sports and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Um, let's talk about the partner strategy because they still need a forward. Uh, that's oh yeah, they need multiple forwards because you lost Coonan and he lost Cousins. Um, and I presume you probably don't want to have another full season of Michael McCarron as the you know the go to fourth line guy. Um, so, you know, the Preds need to have some investment in their forward core. Um, mm -hmm. it's now, you know, we talked about Nino Niederreiter as a possibility. It sounds mm -hmm. like that's not going to happen. Uh, according to Adam Vingen this morning, he said that the Preds were in on Nino Ryder, but, uh, they couldn't agree in a contract that worked for everybody. So it's right. like moving on. Um, Phil Kessel still seems mm -hmm. like the best fit. Um, and is probably not going to command a huge contract. So, yeah, I mean. Make the call. Make yeah, the but, call. But but if neither of those two, you know, if if both of those guys are out, you look at some of the signings yesterday, like Dylan Strom gone. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the point where you're like, okay, there's there's not much here. And Dylan Strom, you look at, at what he signed for, and I'm like, hello, Nashville. This is this is kind of in the wheelhouse of which you should be looking. Went to the Capitals one year. Now it was 3.5 million. So I get that that's a little chunk of change. Yeah, but, but it's you get your deal. Right. I mean, the term is perfect. This is exactly what you're looking for. So that one kind of went. Um, you know, there's always Callie Yarn Croak friends. I mean, like, are we there? Yeah, but like, is is, <laughs> re, is bringing Kelly Yarncroak back gonna be like the thing that makes this team a contender again? Right. Like, it, like, yeah, is no. that is that the best the Preds can do? Like, is anybody gonna bring Kelly Yarncroak back in the fold and be like, hell yeah, now we've got a now team, like ready, like now we're ready to bring you know go head to head with Colorado? No, darn right. Yeah, like I love yeah. Cal Aaron Crook. Maybe, maybe he comes back and he's like the fourth line guy. Like maybe he's Cousins' replacement. 
that's an upgrade. But sure, priority right now needs to be somebody who can play on that second line, and that's you know, yeah. The pickings have become slim. The yeah. pickings have become slim. And I don't know. I mean, could you finagle the roster as it is to fill that spot? I mean, it's you've got bodies, but if you want to be a team, exactly like you said, if you want to be a team that can contend against somebody like Colorado, you got to do something. Yeah. Do something. Something. Well, Let's talk about the one something they did do this offseason, and that was bringing in yes. Ryan McDonough. Uh, I was on vacation when this happened, and so I didn't really mm -hmm. have a chance to chat about it with you. Um, Ryan McDonough had his introductory presser yesterday at Bridgestone Arena, finally. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear from him on what he had to say about joining Nashville and playing in front of the uh, Smashville universe. No, I mean, that you come here as a visiting team. You know it's going to be a, uh, a rowdy crowd in the arena, a, a ruckus crowd. And, and um, you know, if you're not on your game, they, the, the Preds, they take over the momentum and, and just roll with it. And that crowd gets going. Um, it, it's definitely one of the toughest buildings to come into and play. It. And uh, I've talked about how it's so unique uh, where, where Bridgestone is, uh, downtown, right off of Broadway here and, and such a buzzing city and, and you know, credit to the, the, the team and the players over the years, the organization, they've built up such a pride in the Preds, um, that, uh, you, you know, you know, the, that the home crowd is going to be behind you. So to be on the, the home side of it this time and, and going forward, it, it's an awesome feeling and, and, uh, looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, good. Good to see uh, Ryan McDonough give the uh, the Preds fans uh, a shout out there. Um, yeah. We never really talked about this, and um, you know, bringing in Ryan McDonough, the the contract situations a little bit weird. Um, you know, basically because he's a more expensive Eckholm. Uh, is like yes, point seven five for the next four seasons. Uh, so you know that's something that maybe gives people some pause, but um, player wise, certainly a, a big addition to the defense core, which, you know, un low key needed some help. Yes. Yes. No, I really like this signing. I agree with you. Like price tag wise, I'm like, okay, we're going to, it's an investment and term wise investment. But I do think that the predators had to address just some defensive issues. And I think Ryan McDonough is a fantastic grab. And honestly, the thing that I like the most about him is his, and this sounds kind of strange. I mean, he's a great player. He's a great defensive player. He's like you said, he's very Ekholm ish, which is very good, but I love that you're bringing in somebody who has got experience winning a Stanley cup twice. You know, yeah. he has gone through, you know, the playoffs and the Predators, of course, in 2017 got to the finals. We don't have all of those players again. And I think, you know, in listening to a couple of the different pressers that McDonough has done, he talks about, you know, there's a, just a different level that you have to get to when you get into the finals and the progression through the playoffs. And I think to have a voice in the locker room who says, this is what this is going to require of you. I know I've been there. I think this is really valuable. I love this signing. And again, like I get, I get the, you know, it, it's a chunk of change and it's a, you know, it's a commitment. It's a, it's a four-year commitment, but I really like this signing and look, you say what you want. The Predators had to do something defensively. They had to do something defensively. So I like this. And the more I hear from him, the more I like it. I think he's going to be a really good fit in the locker room. Yeah. And, and relatively free too. Uh, you know, you have um, Phil Myers going the other way who he was definitely not going to be a part of the Preds future and Grant Mismash, who was never going to be an NHL prospect. So kind of it's salary right. dump for Tampa that the Preds minded uh, to, to take away from. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about future Preds, shall we, Ann? Um, we shall. Development camp uh, is wrapping up today. Uh, we, yeah. of course, got the scrimmage coming up. Um, and you have been at uh, every practice so far. What, have, what stood out to you? Who has stood out to you? 
development camp and I said this earlier in the week it's my favorite hockey week of the year because you get to see these prospects and having gone several years in a row the thing that always stands out to me is the ability to see the growth in a player's game you know you see them one year and then they go off somewhere and they play their game and they you know do their thing for a season and then they come back and and it's such a great opportunity to kind of compare growth and say okay he went from this to this so of course this year the biggest thing at development camp was askarov mm -hmm. you know elvis is in the building so this was a huge i mean it was so odd the first day of development camp last year there was like three of us there this year walked into development camp and it was packed and i think so much of that had to do with the fact that finally nashville predators fans can put their eyes on Yaroslav askarov and i will tell you from a um, personality standpoint from a hockey overview standpoint it has been a fantastic week for askarov he he is sort of the anti-hockey player personality which i love um tons of personality very happy to be here um it's been great to see him in net because you know we've heard nashville predators fans have heard so much about askarov but not able to see much of him playing last season of course and to get him and see him in net it's been probably the highlight i think of the week for a lot of people and and askarov has thoroughly enjoyed his time here too i think yeah so so what's his expectations we talked to askarov um you know after one of his development camp sessions let's hear from askarov any sense for how high the expectations are from the fans here for what they hope you can be? He said, yeah, he saw it and uh, he's going to work hard and try to prove that he can be that guy. We're, we're all big family. Anything else we're asking? I was going to say, I imagine now that he's in North America, do you stay here? He's not going back to Russia? Uh, yeah, yeah, I stay here. Uh, yes, I'm used to it. Yeah, yeah, he's going to stay here. <laughs> What's the best part about being here so far? Just the best thing that you're here right now. All. Yeah, everything. 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 I mean, he's so totes adorbs. <laughs> okay, who, who, was the, who was the person translating? Was that a fan SF? That is Igor. Yes, Igor yeah. has been Askarov's wingman doing the translating. And look, this is a dynamic duo that Nashville is going to want because they are so, they're so funny. But I will tell you, I watched that clip and, you know, Nick can see when we're watching a clip, he can see me. And I just, I just get yeah. giddy. You were beaming. But I love his energy. I love his personality. And like, it's little things that, and, and I will talk for a minute, you know, in a minute, I will talk about him in that because I know that's what we're here for. But there are moments at development camp that just delight you. And Askarov provides so many of those. They were moving from one ice rink at Centennial to the other. All of the forwards in, had gotten over and were standing there by the coach and Askarov came last stepped on the ice and just belly slid across the <laughs> ice in into the circle for the meeting. And I'm like, where have you been all my life? Like you are delightful. There was a little girl yesterday that was there and she kind of tapped on the glass and, and he didn't really hear her right away. And so she went back and sat down and he turned around and he saw her and she just did a little wave, came over and put his face right up against the glass and, you know, was kind of waving at her and stuff like, love this kid and he's so happy to be here having said all of that um in net it's been really great to watch him in net people have had some concerns about like he's um you know people one of the criticisms is that he's kind of steppy in net like he's a little bit more frantic and you know you've seen some of that settle down he's impressive like you know he's impressive look He's not going to be the backup to UC Saros this year. Can we just say that? Can we just put that out there for everybody who's going to be yeah. like, 
it's Askarov's year. Honey, it's not Askarov's year. Okay. Oh, He's just Kevin a little Lyons. sprout. It's clearly <laughs> Kevin Lyons. I mean, duh. Yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, give this young man a couple of years, give him some time in the AHL, and he is delightful. That is the word I I can use to describe your Slav Askarov. This is a delightful hockey player. It is just, it's just refreshing to hear like a player with personality too. And because hockey players over the last uh, couple of decades or so have been boring AF, you know, it's just like any, anybody that shows like a hint of, you know, having personality, kind of having fun goofing off, boy, they have the, the bad labels slapped on them fast. I mean, think of PK Subban in Montreal whenever he's doing whatever it is he does, you know, yes. it's like, Get oh, off PK Subban people, they're, they're not focused. They're, you know, they're not taking this serious. They're, you know, they're somebody that we can't have in the locker room. And you, I think we've seen a little bit of maybe back towards, you know, players, you know, goofing off, you know, yeah. having hockey is fun. That's something that I get when I, when I've seen Askarov and, and clips mm -hmm. from him, um, this development camp is, it's just like, he looks like he's having fun just being out there playing yeah. hockey. And, you know, there was a very, you know, weird situation with him in Russia last year where, yes. Uh, you know, David Poyle hinted it was almost kind of a vendetta by his Russian team to to make sure he gets like as little ice time as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he'll, he's coming to Milwaukee. You know, his family's here. So there's not any sort of weird, um, you know, other stuff happening. Yes. It's like we've what we've seen from some Russian players this year, unfortunately. Um so, you know, he seems relaxed. He seems ready to go. Um, and, yeah, it feels like Askarov is a guy that I think Preds fans are really going to like. Yes, and I think he feels that already. I think he feels that, you know, he can tell that people are delighted to see him. But, oh, I mean – cookies for Askarov for days. Love him. But there are, of course, other players at development camp that we need to talk about coming up and we get to hear from a couple of them as well. Yeah, that's going to be a big, uh, a big topic uh, Monday when we uh, wrap all this up. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Luke Prokop's a guy we haven't really talked about yet. Oh, Zachary Lahiro is a guy that we've talked about a little <laughs> bit. Uh, I think he's basically Mountain Dew if Mountain Dew was a person. Um, mm -hmm. That is going to be a fun topic. And, of course, I know you're going to be back at camp today uh, and yes. you're going to have all the skinny. So that's coming up Monday. And uh, mm -hmm. who the bloody Dickens knows what the Brits are going to do <laughs> between now and then. Uh, because there, We do not. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so join us Monday for a full wrap up of the development camp and, uh, mm -hmm. anything that may happen with the team between now and then, because I'm sure it's probably going to be something either good or bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just no zero predictions, friends, only just slivers of hope and a dream. That's, that's what we have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, until then though, and where can the fine people find your work? You can find my work at ontheforecheck.com and you can find me on Twitter at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. I'm Nick Morgan. You can find me at ontheforecheck.com. Follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. Also, be sure to follow the show at LO underscore Predators. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. That's going to do it for us today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. We'll be back next week with all new episodes. We'll see you then.